Greetings, everyone, and welcome to part three of the Business Ownership Workshop Series sponsored by the Willow Creek Employment Services team. My name is Mike Waller, and I hope that you've been able to participate in the uh, first two parts of this workshop series that uh, is all about uh, what it means to be in business for yourself and how to give consideration to that. Uh, today's session is going to be about some of the keys to success for establishing your business. So call it some of the details, if you will. Uh, again, this is uh, part three of a six-part series that I'm doing uh, on the subject of entrepreneurship and small business ownership. So let's dive right in. I always like to start with a scripture uh, to frame things. And again, if you've uh, watched part one and part two, you've seen this passage before, Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no guidance of people fails, but in an abundance of counselors, there's safety. The message I'm really trying to, to, to share with you, which is uh, straight from the book of Proverbs, is the importance of having counselors and having uh, people that you trust that you can lean into as you make important decisions in life. Doing something uh, like a business of your own is an important decision. So I encourage you to uh, bring around you people that can give you guidance and direction and uh, help you through this journey. Some of the things we're going to try to cover in this session uh, will be the importance of having a vision. Where do you want this business to go? What's the mission, the purpose? We'll talk about that. The importance of a business plan. Now we're going to cover the business plan off in uh, much greater detail in sessions uh, four and five, but I'm going to touch on it a bit briefly today so you got an understanding of the importance of that. We'll talk a little bit about the importance of knowing what is your value proposition? How do you target your customers? What's your marketing strategy? If you need to raise capital, where does that capital come from? What are some of the options that you might have? Some of the administrative details, again, important to your success are some of the details that lie under the surface of, of the core mission of your business. I'm going to talk a little bit about something uh, that might intrigue you, what I call working on the business versus working in the business. And at the end of the day, Having a business of your own is all about commitment and it is about perseverance to stay the course. So those are the kind of things we're going to cover off here today. So we're going to jump right in. Talk about vision. Now, if this face looks familiar to you, it's probably because he's been on the stage, the national stage in a number of different ways. His name is Colin Powell, former secretary of state under the Bush administration, uh, former uh, general uh, in the United States Army. Uh, the man came from a very interesting background, uh, originally born and raised in uh, Brooklyn, New York, if I recall correctly. Several years ago, he spoke at the Willow Global Leadership Summit, and he spoke to the subject of vision. And he said the importance of having a vision is because when you're in a role of leadership or you're in a business of any sort, you have to be able to present to employees, to your clientele, to your audience, if you will, a clear sense of vision, which gives you purpose and mission to drive the organization, but gives other people that would be a part of the organization the reason to follow. That's the reason why uh, a vision is so important. So I, I encourage you to think of what is the vision that you might have for any kind of a business you're considering starting. Secondarily, a business plan. What is a business plan? It is nothing more complicated than the story of your business. So why is a business plan so important? Well, number one, it requires you to take the time and the effort to really put together a strategy behind what it is that you're looking to do in your business. Whether you're going to start something from scratch or you're going to buy into a franchise, you still need to have a plan for how you're going to make this business successful. But secondarily, if you are needing to raise money from any lending source, a bank or friends, family, a bank is definitely going to require that you have a business plan to present to them. And that is the reason why I've got a whole uh, two sessions dedicated to the whole uh, idea of the importance of your business plan and some things to give consideration to. So again, those will be in parts four and five, but this is just a little teaser for you. Everything starts with a plan. It's wonderful to have a goal, but unless you have some kind of a plan behind how you're going to make that goal successful, 
then you decrease the probabilities of succeeding in accomplishing that goal. Your value proposition is vital. You have to know, you know, what is the need or the problem that you're going to be solving or fulfilling for someone? What is it that's going to set you apart and make you unique? I'll go back to the story that I shared in uh, the, one of the prior sessions about uh, a client of mine by the name of Jeff who uh, got into a commercial sign making business and his due diligence found that there were 14 sign makers in the community of Schaumburg, which is he, where he was establishing himself. Now, some people would look at that and say, whoa, too much competition. If you're risk averse, that scares you. If you're risk tolerant, you go opportunity, which is the way Jeff saw it. But he said, how are we going to distinguish ourselves? He created a simple little tagline that he used to drive himself and to drive his organization and his employees. He said, simply, we're going to go out and make friends because friends make better customers. How complicated is that? That was a key distinction that he established for himself. And he did a few other things also. He uh, um, decided that uh, they would make sure they answered the phone by the third ring, made a decision that they would get quotes back to their clients uh, by the end of the day, if at all possible. And so the bottom line on all that is, is that how are you going to make yourself unique when there is a competitive landscape out there? You have to know who your competitors are. And again, how are you different and better than any of them? Because competition is not a bad thing. Competition just validates the fact that there's a marketplace for whatever product or service you're looking to be a part of. And then why are people going to buy from you? At the end of the day, you have to be able to answer that question of, again, why would anybody buy anything from you versus any other uh, competitor that's out there? A little bit about financing options. Again, if you're in a position uh, that you're going to establish a substantial business of some sorts, or maybe not even a substantial business, but something that's going to require funding from some other source, um, get you comfortable with the fact that there is no such thing as free money. Uh, maybe you won a lottery. Uh, maybe you didn't. Maybe you had an inheritance check come in from uh, Aunt Lucy or um, Uncle Louie that uh, left you with a big pot of money that allows you to go do some things. These are some options that you might have. I'll just kind of touch on them briefly so you got an idea. Self-funding, if you've been fortunate enough to set aside some resources that you can tap into, that's wonderful savings, uh, assets of some for form that you can use to fund your business. That's one of the ways. Not uncommon to think about going to a bank. If you're gonna to go to a bank, they're gonna expect you to have anywhere from 10 to 30% uh, investment or cash in, uh, skin in the game, uh, you might say. And that is, uh, well, it's going to be determined by how high of a credit risk that they see you. So having a good credit score is going to make a difference in terms of the amount of money that you have to put into it. There's a program that uh, is managed through the banking system, but it's called the SBA Guar Loan Guarantee Program. And SBA stands for Small Business Administration, which is an agency of the federal government that uh, is funded through Congress uh, authorizing somewhere between 25 and $30 billion a year to be used for investment and economic development through this program they call the SBA Loan Guarantee Program. It's administered through the banking system. You always go to a banking institution. You, don't, you can't borrow money directly from the government, uh, but you can go through the banking system and they will make a determination as to whether or not the SBA Loan Guarantee Program is a potential option for you. And so that is a program that is available to you. They have a number of different plans. Uh, one is uh, the 150, exp 150,000 express program that you can get up to that with relatively low documentation, all the way up to millions of dollars, uh, depending on the size of the investment and whether or not it includes real estate and assets of any sorts. Another source may be potentially if you have a home uh, that you have ownership in and have owned for some period of time that you may have some equity in, you might be able to raise money through a line of credit home equity loan. Friends and family. Uh, this is where you find out whether or not your friends uh, like you and your family loves you, if they are able to give you some money to invest in your business. There are other programs out there that they're called micro loans. And by the way, the, the bank loan, uh, SBA loan world is uh, interest rates uh, at this stage, probably somewhere in about the six to 8% uh, range. 
Uh, however, uh, there is a microloan program that's run through a number of different organizations. One of them is a, a business called the Axion, A-C-C-I-O-N dot com. Less than $50,000. The downside of it is, is it's generally geared towards people who are higher credit risk. So the interest rates are considerably higher, approaching uh, credit card rates. Um, unsecured loans, pretty tough to get, but sometimes you can get a small loan of two to three thousand dollars through a bank with just your signature. Again, if you have good credit rating. Another program that you may or may not be aware of is what's called a rollover program, a ROBS, R-O-B-S is, is a term that's uh, used also. Uh, it involves using any monies that you may have in a 401k or an IRA to fund your business without having to pay the penalties. Fully uh, authorized by the IRS, been going on for the last two to three decades. Uh, it is a way to tap into those funds without paying the penalties to start a business. If that's something you have an interest in, I uh, would encourage you to reach out to me and I can help to connect you with some people that can give you some more information of that. And you can do that again by uh, the front of this presentation uh, has my LinkedIn uh, contact information, so feel free to reach out. Grants, uh, everybody would love to get a grant of some kind of monies, but it's very, very difficult and very rare. It depends on uh, a number of different factors, but not to be thrown out. And then there's this thing called crowdfunding, which uh, may be a term you don't even recognize, but it is another way to raise money. Uh, and there are a number of different organizations that do this. You might check out crowdfunding on Google, or you might uh, also check out Indiegogo uh, or uh, GoFundMe uh, as um, potential sources for helping you to put together a crowdfunding program. So um, again, check it out on Google and you'll uh, educate yourself about what crowdfunding is all about. So how do you prepare for your financing? Well, you need to know what your credit score is. If you don't know that already, uh, there's an organization called creditkarma.com, which provides free credit scores. Uh, you have to put up with some advertising on their website, but uh, you can get credit score credit scores uh, reported through the uh, primary agencies. There's three that uh, track credit scores of every, every one of us, but you can get access to uh, one, if not two of those through creditkarma.com for nothing. Have a business plan with a compelling story. A banker is going to be looking for that from you. Have a personal financial statement. Know what resources that you, you have in the form of convertible assets or in cash of some, uh, some form. Knowing your numbers inside and out. If you've ever watched a program called Shark Tank, you'll know that uh, the sharks always go to the numbers very, very quickly. And so you need to know your numbers inside and out also if you're looking to get financing from uh, any funding source. Uh, the amount of money that you can invest and the amount of money that you need to borrow. You need to have a clear understanding of what your capacity is. Pro forma financial statements. These are, if you did, if the term is, is foreign to you, it says that you need to have a financial advisor who can help to guide you through the process of creating what's known as a pro forma, which is essentially a projection of what you expect the income and expenses and the profitability of your business to be over some uh, at least three years uh, and first year in compelling detail. Uh, so that's important that you have those in order to look to get financing. A banker's gonna want that from you. A few other small business administrative details. Your legal entity is extremely important and it's important to get it right in the beginning because it does one very important thing or two important things. One is it determines the amount of tax that you're going to have to pay to the state government and the federal government. Secondly, it puts a firewall between your personal assets and your business. Why is that important? Well, we live in a very litigious world. And unfortunately, people do sue other people. It is not uncommon for a business to get sued for some reason. You want to make sure that if you would get sued and you did not have sufficient insurance to cover a judgment against you, that they could not come after your personal assets to settle that judgment. In a scenario like that, your worst case situation would be that you may have to bankrupt your company but you don't lose your house or your car or your dog or your any of the other assets that you might have. Now, there are a number of different uh, 
types of entities. Sole proprietorship is the lowest common denominator. It, your taxes are filed through uh, your 1040 individual tax filing, but it does not give you any of that firewall protection. Um, and so I don't encourage or recommend that uh, to anyone, but I realize that you may have a small hobby kind of a business that has very, very minimal liability. You may want to take the risk on it. However, my encouragement would be look at an LLC, limited liability company, or a true corporation, which a C corporation or a subset of that known as the subchapter S corporation. Each of those has different tax implications. And so it is important that you get good advice. This is where you need a counselor. And my advice is you need to have a CPA to give you advice as to what is the right entity to set up to ensure that you pay what you're obliged to from a taxation standpoint, but that you don't pay more than you, you you are obligated to and that you have again that firewall protection uh, for your business. Uh, I can tell you from a personal standpoint as a business owner, uh, I am set up as an LLC and I file my taxes as a subchapter S because there is a um, clause in the code that my CPA made me aware of that allows me to minimize the amount of self-employment tax that I have to pay. Uh, again, all street legal, all uh, appropriate. Uh, and so those are the reasons why you need to have a counselor who can give you good advice in that area. Again, any of these can be set up by yourself by going to the Secretary of State's website, which I'll give you that information a little bit further in, uh, or you can hire an attorney, or again, some CPAs will actually help you to set up that legal entity. But it's very, very important that you do it and you get it right in the beginning to minimize your tax obligation and at the same time to ensure that you've got that firewall protection. Your federal tax ID is a term that you may hear somewhere along the line. It is normally set up whenever you set up your legal entity. Uh, it is the equivalent of your social security number for your business, and it can be gotten directly by going to the irs.gov website, and you can acquire it that way. Or again, if you hire someone to set up your uh, legal entity, uh, they can do that for you. Sales tax ID in the state of Illinois, whenever you sell product of any sorts, you have to collect the sales tax on behalf of the state and then submit that on a uh, regular basis, uh, typically monthly, possibly quarterly, and in some cases annually, depending upon the nature and uh, the kind of business that you're in. Compliance. This is particularly important when you're in any kind of a business or looking to go into any kind of a business that has public safety involved. Think in terms of anything associated with food or food production or restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. Think in terms of professionally regulated um, professions such as uh, electricians or plumbers. Again, those things do involve public safety. My advice is very, very simple. Check with your local uh, village officials uh, where you're going to establish your, your business at. Check at the county level and check at the state level to ensure that you've got the proper licensing for your business at all those levels. You can typically do that by talking to uh, the, the clerk, in the case of the city clerk or the county clerk, uh, uh, or the secretary of state's office in the uh, uh, Springfield, Illinois. So again, compliance is a very, very important thing that you make your, make sure that you are completely compliant with all the rules and regulations. Payroll taxes, if you're gonna have employees, you're gonna be expected to collect the taxes on behalf of those employees and file them with the state and the federal government. There are organizations such as ADP, uh, Sure Payroll, uh, Intuit, uh, paychecks, organizations like that that actually do that process for you at a relatively reasonable fee, save you all the trouble of doing the filings and maintain, ensures that you maintain compliance with, uh, with the government uh, entities on collecting the payroll taxes and paying them on a regular basis. Insurance, don't underestimate the importance of having the proper insurance. And my encouragement is uh, you should probably talk to an insurance broker as opposed to a direct rider. Now, direct riders would be Organizations like State Farm, All States, uh, uh, American Family, they can write all kinds of business insurance, but most of the business insurance in this country is actually written through independent broker uh, agencies because they typically shop it through uh, half a dozen or so different companies and can ensure that you get the best deal and you want to make sure you get the right kind of insurance. General liability is a very, very uh, common thing. 
but it depends on the nature of what your business is. For example, if you are looking to go into a consulting practice of any sorts, you need to give consideration to having what's known as E and O, errors and omissions insurance. Now, the reason for that is, is that if you would get sued because you gave advice to a company uh, for that somehow affected their P&L and as a result of your advice, they lost a million dollars in their business, they're likely to come back and sue you. Your general liability insurance would not cover that. Your E&O insurance would cover that, assuming you have limits up to that level. That's the reason why I say another one of your advisors needs to be a good insurance broker to give you counsel as to the kind of insurance that you need to make sure that you have to maintain your business. Record keeping, important. You need to be able to, to maintain a set of books as the term is commonly used. Uh, QuickBooks is one of the most commonly used small business uh, software sets that's out there. You can uh, buy it as a piece of software or you can uh, buy it to be used in the cloud. If you don't know what the cloud is, you need another advisor to uh, an IT advisor to help you to understand what the cloud is all about. But again, keeping books is very, very important. You need to know on a daily basis what's the status of your business from a profit and loss standpoint. A few other getting started tips to give consideration to uh, your internet identity. If you've got a name in mind, you might just go out to uh, uh, your web browser and plug in the name of your business and see if anybody is using it. Uh, if they are, then you can go to a website called domainspot.com and see who is the owner of that. It's, it's not uncommon that somebody owns the name but is not using the name. You may be able to acquire it from them. Uh, another alternative is with domainspot.com is they can come up, help you to come up with an alternative name that uh, may be close to what you wanted to name your business uh, that is available. And so you can check out domainspot.com. Uh, NetworkSolutions.com is the main uh, primary keeper of all the domain names that exist on the internet. Website mobile application development. Virtually any kind of a business today needs website and mobile application uh, presence. There are a couple of websites you can uh, tap into. Envato uh, or Weebly.com is, is one that uh, can help you to develop a website presence and a mobile application presence. If you need branding or you need identity uh, uh, assistance of some sorts to create some uh, kind of a unique identity with your company. And Vado.com has got resources out there that you can potentially tap into that can help you in, in both these arenas. Um, if you've got intellectual property you want to protect, you've got a copyright or a, a trademark you want to register in some way, USPTO.gov is a place it gets done. You can actually go out to the website and you can get some guidance from there. But I would encourage you, if you do have something like that, that you probably need to work with a, um, a copyright attorney who knows the ins and outs and all the nuances associated with trademark and, uh, and copyright registration. And then there's the website that I mentioned uh, previously, the Secretary of State's website called CyberDriveIllinois.com is a, a place where you can actually go out and set up your own legal entity should you choose to do that. It's got all the instructions and all the requirements and uh, the fees associated with that. Uh, you can check it out, but it's also a great resource to tap into for additional guidance as to which, uh, which professions are, are registered or licensed. Uh, you might be surprised that uh, in the state of Illinois, there are quite a number of them that uh, have a licensure requirement associated with them. So again, just some other getting started tips for you. Um, I mentioned early when I uh, put up the slide that talked a little bit about some of the keys to success that I'd, I'd talk to you about what I call working in versus working on your business. There's a book that I'd recommend that you give consideration to. It's called The E-Myth, M-Y-T-H, written by a fellow by the name of Michael Gerber, who was a consultant to a lot of small businesses. Uh, back in the mid 80s, he wrote the first edition of this book because he had done a lot of consulting for organizations. And he saw people who were very, very successful. And what he came up with was a principle that simply says this, if you're spending all your time working in your business, then you may not be optimizing the opportunity to scale and grow your business. Versus if you work on the business, you're focusing on the things that are the most important to grow your business, which are typically marketing, financial administration, management of processes. He uses a story thread, and that's the reason why you see a picture of a, a lady there with a pie in her hand, uh, of a pie baker lady who has loved to bake pies. People told her she did a great job. She decided to start a business, created the business, became the primary pie baker, found out that she burned herself out because she was trying to do everything, versus 
bringing, training somebody to do what she did with her recipes and create many, many more pies because she focused on getting the big accounts. So that instead of selling 50 pies, she could sell 500 pies or 5,000 pies because she was focused on the marketing side. How do I get the bigger jobs? I can train people to follow my recipes and create the pies. Again, a book that you might enjoy reading. Give you some great insights. So what are your next steps? Well, in the next couple of sessions, we're going to focus on the business plan and in detail, uh, how to create a marketing plan. So it's really all about figuring out, is your idea really feasible? Do the numbers work and is funding within your reach? And you always have to be prepared to hit the brakes if it doesn't really add up. You may have a wonderful idea and have a passion for something, but I can tell you that if it doesn't monetize for you, you're gonna find yourself being very, very frustrated with your business and wishing that you'd never done it because you didn't do your homework in advance. Greatest amount of time uh, that's wasted is the time not getting started. So many people have a dream, but they've never chased the dream. You just got to start somewhere and a business plan is a good place to start it. And that's the reason why we've dedicated uh, a couple of sessions to really get into the business plan. So the next session will be part number four, which is all about how to create your business plan or what the components of your business plan are. And so I encourage you to maybe take a short break and come back and uh, join us for part four of this workshop series. Again, your business plan. Thanks again for listening.